Could you survive 30 days in the wild? This question, it's one that's gripped the human imagination since time immemorial. It's not just about physical strength or skill, but mental fortitude. Preparedness is key, but so is the ability to adapt, to think on your feet when Mother Nature throws you a curveball. So as we delve into the unforgiving wilderness, ask yourself, do you have the resilience, the resourcefulness, the will to overcome? Let's find out together if you have what it takes. Surviving in the wild starts with understanding the basics. It's about knowing how to prioritize and when to act. A useful guideline to remember is the rule of threes. This rule is not an absolute law of nature, but a helpful way to keep your survival needs in perspective. Imagine this. The human body can endure roughly three minutes without air. Sounds terrifying, right? But fear not, unless you're underwater or in outer space, air supply is rarely a problem in survival situations. However, it's a good reminder of how vital breathing is. So if you ever find yourself in a situation where the air is thin or polluted, remember to focus on maintaining your air supply above all else. Now let's talk about shelter. In extreme conditions, Hypothermia or heat stroke can strike within three hours. Shelter is your shield, your fortress against the onslaught of Mother Nature. A good shelter can mean the difference between life and death. So when you're out there, exposed to the elements, remember to secure a safe and warm shelter as soon as you can. Next, we have water. The human body can go for about three days without water, depending on the conditions. Water is the elixir of life. It keeps your body functioning and your mind sharp. When you're out in the wild, finding a clean source of water should be high on your priority list. Finally, food. Believe it or not, you can survive approximately three weeks without food. It won't be pleasant and your body will definitely protest, but it's possible. Food is your body's fuel and without it, you'll eventually run out of energy. But remember, in a survival situation, food is less of an immediate concern than air, shelter, and water. Remember, the rule of threes isn't a hard and fast rule, but a guideline to help prioritize your survival needs. It's about knowing what your body needs, when it needs it, and in what order. So when you step into the wilderness, keep the rule of threes in mind. It might just save your life. Your first priority in the wild? Shelter. Here's why. You may think food and water are your immediate concerns, but consider this. Exposure to harsh weather conditions can end a life in a matter of hours. A well-constructed shelter, on the other hand, shields you from the elements, conserves your body heat, and provides a much-needed mental boost. In essence, it becomes your first line of defense against the unforgiving wilderness. Now, let's delve into the different types of natural shelters. Caves, for instance, are a ready-made haven, offering protection from wind, rain, and potentially dangerous animals. However, they're not without their risks. Always thoroughly inspect the cave before settling in. You wouldn't want to find yourself sharing your new home with a bear, would you? If caves aren't an option, look for fallen trees or dense foliage. They can provide a solid base for constructing a shelter. Just ensure the area isn't prone to flooding or insect infestations. Safety, as always, is paramount. So how do you build a basic shelter? Start by finding a sturdy branch and prop it up diagonally against a tree trunk. This will serve as your main support. Then, gather smaller branches and lean them against your main support to form the skeleton of your shelter. Finally, layer leaves, moss, and other available vegetation over your skeleton to insulate it and keep the rain out. And voila, you've built your first wilderness shelter. Remember, time is of the essence. Aim to have your shelter ready before nightfall. The darkness not only makes construction more difficult, but it also brings a drop in temperature and the potential for predators to be on the prowl. In conclusion, never underestimate the power of a good shelter. It's more than just four walls and a roof. It's your fortress against the wild, your refuge from the storm, your haven in the heart of the wilderness. A good shelter can mean the difference between life and death in the wild. Next up, water. It's more important than food. In the grand scheme of survival, water is the elixir of life. It's the element that keeps our bodies functioning at their best. Without it, we can only survive for about three days, much less than without food. Why is water so vital? Well, it helps to regulate our body temperature, aids digestion, and even cushions our organs. 
It's the oil that keeps the machine of our body running smoothly. Without it, the machine grinds to a halt. Now finding water in the wilderness can be a challenge, but nature often provides. Seek out streams, rivers, and lakes, but remember, not all water is safe to drink. It may contain harmful bacteria or parasites. So, how do you make wilderness water safe? Boiling is one of the simplest and most effective methods. Boiling kills most types of disease-causing organisms. If you can't start a fire, you can use a water filter or purifying tablets. Dehydration is a real danger in survival situations. It can lead to dizziness, confusion, and even unconsciousness. So keep sipping on that life-giving liquid. Let's not forget, water isn't just for drinking. It's used for cooking, cleaning, and even for first aid. It's a multi-purpose tool in the wild. Staying hydrated isn't just about comfort. It's a necessity for survival. Food won't be your first concern but it will become one. You can survive about three weeks without food, but without it, your energy will dwindle, making other survival tasks more difficult. The wild is a supermarket of possibilities, filled with plants, insects, and game. But remember, not everything that looks appetizing is safe to eat. Plants can be a good source of sustenance. Some are rich in vitamins and nutrients, but it's crucial to know which are edible and which are not. Some berries may look delicious, but they can be poisonous. Familiarize yourself with the local flora before your adventure. Insects, though not everyone's first choice, are a high-protein snack that can be found almost everywhere. Earthworms, grasshoppers, and ants are all edible, but make sure to cook them first to kill any parasites. Hunting, on the other hand, is a more energy-intensive way to obtain food. Small animals like rabbits or squirrels can be trapped using snares while fishing can provide a good source of protein. But remember, hunting requires a lot of energy and isn't always successful, so it should be your last resort. Your survival may hinge on your ability to identify and procure food in the wilderness. So, equip yourself with the right knowledge and skills before you set foot in the wild. Knowledge is power when it comes to finding food in the wild. Fire, the lifesaver, can make all the difference. It's not just a provider of warmth in the face of bone-chilling cold. It's more than a tool for cooking food. Fire is a beacon, a signal, a lifeline reaching out to the world beyond your wilderness confines. In the vastness of the wild, fire becomes your most trusted ally. Its warmth wards off hypothermia, a silent and deadly threat in the cold. The heat of a fire can also dry wet clothing and gear, an essential step in maintaining your health and well-being. But the role of fire extends beyond personal comfort. It's a kitchen in the wilderness, transforming raw, inedible morsels into nourishing meals. It's a purifier, making water safe to drink by killing off harmful bacteria and parasites. Fire also weaves a thread of hope through the fabric of survival. A well-tended fire can serve as a signal, its smoke visible for miles, potentially attracting the attention of rescuers. So how do you kindle this life-saving element without matches or a lighter? It's all about friction. Using a stick and a baseboard, you can create enough heat through persistent rubbing to ignite a spark. Nurturing that spark into a flame requires patience and practice, but it's a skill worth mastering. In the wild, fire is not merely a luxury, it's a necessity. Mastering fire could be your key to survival. Surviving 30 days in the wild isn't about being the strongest or the fastest. It's about being the most prepared. We've journeyed through the essentials of wilderness survival, unraveling the secrets of shelter, water, food, and fire. Each element has its role, a cog in the intricate machinery of survival. Shelter shields you from the harsh elements, while water, the life-giving elixir, keeps you hydrated and functioning. Food fuels your fight against nature's tests, and fire, that ancient lifesaver, warms you, cooks your meals, and keeps predators at bay. Remember, survival is not about brute force or speed. It's about knowledge, preparedness, and most importantly, the right mindset. It's about understanding your environment, harnessing its resources, and respecting its power. In the wilderness, you are not the master but a guest, and survival is the art of being a gracious guest. So do you think you could survive 30 days in the wild? Now, you might just have a better chance.